You know, it's hunting season. Yep, that's right. It's that time of year again. Kind of like, you know, fall, winter, where different animals are going into season and people have decided that there's certain times that you can shoot and kill and skin and get some meat. You know, deer season, moose season, bear season, duck season. Matter of fact, it's kind of like a season of hunting. You know, you get to go out and kill things, you know. Even during Thanksgiving, you get to go out and kind of like, you know, take out a turkey. <laughs> Good luck. But everyone, at different times and different points in their life, experience different seasons of their life. But this time of year, there are people that are really looking forward to going out and killing something. You know, they own guns, you know, and by their guns, they're known. You know, they're, they're known for their collection of guns. They have, you know, their Glocks and their, their you know... 30 odd six, you know, and their shotguns and, you know, their Brownings and you name it, their Mossbergs, you know, and they, they have their clothes, they have their guns, they have their weapons. They even have, you know, little companies that get together and build little areas where they can go out and kill something, you know, go out and enjoy hunting and killing. Okay, you know, me, not so much. You know, the one time I went out, I remember going out hunting, you know, and I sat all morning, you know, waiting for dawn to come up, you know, and I had my gun, you know, and I was ready, you know, and we were out deer hunting with my brother-in-law, and, you know, it was kind of neat, you know, it was kind of like this valley, you know, and I saw, and it was beautiful, gorgeous valley, oh, I was spending some time with the Lord, you know, it was kind of neat, and so it's like, I was almost disappointed when I got up and started, you know, hunting down this deer that I saw, you know, it's kind of like, you know, saw the track, you know, kind of knew he was going, so, you know, sure enough, I go into some brush, you know, and up jumps this deer. He leaps out in front of me and I blast away. Obviously, I missed him. <laughs> no blood trails. Tried to find him. I couldn't see him anywhere. I mean, no deers can move fast, you know. Boy, when it comes time to move it, man, they know how. And sure enough, you know, I didn't manage to kill him, you know, and I've never really had the opportunity, you know, to do that kind of vocation. So there's really, I can say, you know, to most people in my life, you know, there's no blood on my hands. I've worked cleaning fish, you know, and I've helped different people do things at different times that involves, you know, blood. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've had to get my hands bloodied, you know, I've seen people dying, you know, and I've had to help them and other things. But the point is, I wasn't a hunter, and I'm not. You know, I, I personally enjoy violent movies, you know, I kind of like looking at, you know, all this, you know, shoot them up you know, kill them and, you know, relive and, you know, people get killed that are the bad guys and the good guys live, you know, and you cry when the good guys die and all that kind of stuff. But I'm not really a hunter, you know. I, I'm more interested in things that last longer than just a season. You see, sooner or later, there's going to be a time when we no longer have guns. As a matter of fact, it's going to be sooner than later. And there's going to be a time where we no longer hunt and eat meat because we're actually told that our meat is to do the will of the Father. Our meat is the Word of God. We're not really going to chew on animals because our bodies really weren't designed to eat meat. Now, sadly for my wife, unfortunately, that's probably her version of hell. She loves meat. Matter of fact, she loves steak. She eats all kinds of meat. Man, she just... Her, her her idea of a perfect day is to porterhouse it, you know, morning, noon, and night. My God, the woman could eat meat every day, and probably does most of the time if she could get away with it. Me, you know, I, I like meat, you know, I eat it, you know, I'm not a veggie, you know, I'm not one of those vegetarian, you know, nuts that run around, you know, telling everybody to go kosher. I've done it, you know, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm not one of those people that says, you know, you only got to eat veggies or you got to eat, you know, soy or whatever you want to replace your meat diet or protein, but I've done it, you know, in the past, and there's a benefit to it. But for me, I'm just not the person that goes out and decides to shoot animals, you know, or I'm not the kind of person that goes out and worships animals either. You know, I don't have animals, you know, like with clothes on. I don't doggy up my house, you know, in order to make it comfortable for the dog. I put the dog outside where it belongs, you know, because it's, after all, a dog, not a house pet. You know, I'm sorry. There's just something to be said about in some places there's a purpose and a design that God has made for everything under the sun. And for me, a time to be born, a time to die, and a time to put the dog out. Because <laughs> the reality is, uh-uh, hey, it's my bed. Get out, dog. 
And my wife enjoys that because, frankly, she doesn't want to sleep with the dog either. Now, when I was living alone, maybe it might have been a three-dog night. So I lived in Alaska or a two-dog night. You know, that cold that we had to sleep with our dogs, you know, to stay warm. But the issue being is that my focus is on eternal things. I'm more interested in what I'm known for than what I do as a avocation. You can do anything you want to do. If you're a hunter, you can get out your guns and get buck fever and get hunting fever and get the season and the licenses and the tickets and everything and go out and do your thing. And people won't stop you from doing it if you do it legally. And matter of fact, some people might enjoy you know getting the rewards of your labor. You know, the fact that you've gone out and killed something and then you bring back the meat you know to eat. Or even if you do it for fun, well, okay, you know, you did your trophy thing. But God doesn't prevent you from those things. He just says that if you do these things, this is what's going to happen. For David, he was a man after God's own heart. But he was a warrior. He was a man who knew how to kill. And God told him something very interesting that I learned very early on in my life. David could not build the temple of God because he was a man with bloodied hands. Now, I understand that principle because you see, whether people admit it or not, the first time you take a life, you're changed. The first time blood is shed by you, the earth cries out at what you've done. God said so in the original Garden of Eden that we lived in, that at that point in time, even after Adam and Eve were taken out of the garden, the earth cried out when Cain slew Abel. You see, the earth cried out. I found that interesting because that is violence in its purest form. That's what happens when we exercise our freedoms to do what we want. We'll be known as a violent man if we're violent. We'll be known as hunters if we hunt. We'll be known as peacemakers if we're peacemakers. We'll be known as life takers if we take life. Now, a lot of people seem to have this great argument about, oh, well, you know, we believe in capital punishment because, you know, after all, you know, it's, it's one of those things that God allows us to do. Well, yeah, God does allow you to have the scepter that belongs in Jesus' hands, and he allows you to exercise your will to do your way the way you want to today and practice capital punishment because society can do those things but society will pay the price of the blood that's shed for exercising capital punishment God will ask that society what have you done with the blood of the one that I created in other words life was created by God and that's where people make the mistake when they think they can get away with anything without thinking about what they're doing God is the one factor that's always left out of the equation. That's why it never works out right. Capital punishment doesn't work right because God's left out of it. Jesus, when he came, said, love your enemies. You have heard it said, an eye for an eye. Capital punishment in the extreme. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, and then people say, well, that's going to happen in the kingdom. Yeah, it started with Jesus and it kept on with his disciples and it kept on through 300 years of church history and then it continued on in the Catholic Church. Unfortunately, when you started to get into Protestant Reformation, you started getting a little bit carried away about some of the things that the Catholic Church had abused by claiming in the name of God certain wars and they decided that, hey, you know what? We're into capital punishment. But originally, no offense, it wasn't so. Christians were known for their love. By this shall ye know that they are my disciples indeed, in that you have love for one another, and that you love the world as I have loved you. Christians were known for being martyrs, not for being men of God that carry out the word of God by killing people. Unfortunately, that's what Christianity is known for. But the disciples of Jesus were known for dying for their faith not killing others in the name of God. You see the difference? Religious Christianity without a relationship with God is known for killing in the name of God. But the relationship with Jesus as being his disciple is known for dying for the Lord rather than 
killing in the name of God. So you can do what you want to do. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can hunt and God bless you, you know. Pray about it and go do it. You know, enjoy it. What you're known for is what you are. You'll be known for what you do and you'll give an accounting someday for what you've done in this body and in this flesh. I thank God that at every occasion that I've had, even when I joined the Marine Corps, that I never had the opportunity or the capability to take a human life. You see, God prevented me and went way out of his way miraculously several times when I tried to take a life. And he stopped me from it every time because he chose me to be different. He chose me for his purpose, not my own. Because believe me, I wanted to be John Wayne. I mean, I'm like out there, hey, let's go do marksmanship. You know, I'd love to kill things. You know, and blow them up, kill them, shoot them, make them dead. But God chose me to save those for eternity that I would have killed in the name of His kingdom. You see, maybe you have already shed innocent blood. Praise the Lord. God can use you where you're at. God can change you if you want to. He could take away the stain, but you'll still suffer the consequences because, quite frankly, though you are a new creation, old things have passed away, all things become new, there is a price you paid, and you know it better than I do, about what you've done. You know as well as I do that post-traumatic stress disorder is not just simply about going to war. The first time that you killed someone, the first time that you committed some type of killing, whether we call it murder or we call it killing, no matter how you justify it, your soul was scarred. There was a difference, and you know it. You know when you stand before God Almighty, a holy and just God, that though you may have done it for the right reasons, the cause may not have been just in the sense of what you did, whether or not God wanted you to. Because only God can lead you. And God may have used you, as he did David, to kill at times. Used you as a vessel of his righteous judgment at times. But if you're known for being a killer, if you're known for being a hunter, what happens when there's no more killing? And that will happen. What happens when there's no more hunting? Wouldn't you rather have chosen to do those things that last in eternity? Or are you content with just repeating the cycle over and over again every season, doing the same thing, participating in the same way, appeasing that bloodlessness that must have blood shed in order to satisfy the hunting crave, that you trained your hands for war because the day will come when God said they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks nations shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war anymore and the lions shall lay down with the lamb and Jesus himself will rule from Jerusalem but he will hold the scepter he alone will determine life and death Man has not the ability to look on the heart, but God can. So, a lot of what we do, we choose to do according to mercy and grace, hoping that God forgive us for the place we put ourselves. But God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sow with that also shall he reap. So what you choose to do in your freedoms really determine who you are as well as what you are. By their fruits you shall know them. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet waters and bitter waters? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a vine, can it bear figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may see by your good works and behold and glorify God in the day of visitation. For God shall visit them. Has God visited you in your works and righteousness that you've done? 
Do you bring God in your killing, your hunting, your time of war, your time of need? God shall provide. God is there. God doesn't lie. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his tree and fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Today, people tell me all kinds of scriptures for what they want to do, and what they can do, and what they will do, because they'll do it anyway. My question has always been to every person that tells me these things, what did God tell you to do today? What have you done to ask God to lead you today? Because if he led you where you're going, then I trust that the consequences of your actions are in accordance to his will and not your own. But if you haven't asked God to lead you today, and you're doing something outside of his will, oh, he may forgive you. He may cause you to receive mercy and grace, but he's also not mocked. You've planted seed with your actions. You've done things by your own determination that God will not be mocked, but you will reap what you sow, as every man shall. For you shall be known by who you are because of what you are and the way you did it. Choose this day whom you will serve, whether it be the gods of men and the gods of war and the gods of nations and the gods of the humanistic endeavors to rule themselves, or whether you will serve the Lord in fear and joy, in trust and obedience, in asking Him to lead you today. Because today, if you've asked Him to lead you, then you know who you are. Make the tree good, and its fruit good thereof. Be a vine in Jesus, for without Him you can do nothing. But if you choose to go your own way, then you already know what you are. For you're a tree that does not know its own fruit. You're a tree that doesn't realize that it's withered and dying. That outside of God's will, you are just a planting that needs water. And today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart and says provocation, but get in the word and receive from God the sustenance to make choices he determines for you, not you determine for yourself. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 will always lead you if you ask Him. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Because after all, it is a season, but what season it is, it's up to you to make it.